And the reason I feel that I have to make this video is ultimately because scripture is being perverted. Guess who? Well, looks like the good Lord just sent me a conversation starter. Shalom, and thank you for joining me on Q&A on Asher Mesa versus Mike Molinar on Noahide Laws and Asher Mesa versus Mike Molinar on Oral Law. Asher has a video about his feelings about people trying to destroy him, and if you want to destroy him, he invites anyone to debate him. No haters. It's a lot easier than that. All you have to do is show on the air that what I teach is contrary to Torah and Halakha. Debate me on the air. That's it. It's so easy. It's so simple. And yes, if you demonstrate this, I will stop teaching it. Shall we continue to demonstrate? Today we're going to start off by testing the impossibility of the Star Wars Han Solo Chewbacca Millennium Falcon Hyperdrive Space Flying Back to the Future Einstein Doc Marty DeLorean Time Traveling Science Fiction Oral Law Impossibility. Asher's Moroff Theology says the oral law comes from an unbroken chain of judges from Sinai to the Second Temple, versus the traditional theology that the oral law comes from an unbroken chain of oral commandments from Moses to the Second Temple. Asher has 20 light years of information on the oral law and the authority of the rabbis and the ancient judges, and he tells me it's clear to him and his perverted disciples that I'm not well trained and knowledgeable about the ancient judges. You're giving me a lesson of what a judge is. I, I get all that. I'm not giving you a lesson. I'm giving, I'm giving the listeners a premise for from where we're going to build on. Okay. You know, I understand that you never really studied the role of the judge, and it's not one that's very popular. I never really. You, you said that I, you understand that I never really studied the role of the judge. You don't know me. How do you know what I study, Asher? Okay. But it really doesn't matter what Mike Molinar thinks because what Asher teaches contradicts of what the Tanakh says about the judges. Because in the Tanakh, it tells us the beginning and the end of the error of the judges. After Joshua's death, the book of Judges is a beginning error of the judges of Israel. Israel has forsaken the king of heaven and apathy to his Torah and has been replaced with subjectism. Since there was no physical king, the people of Israel did what was right in their own sight. Israel was in apathy and apothecy and had forsaken the Creator. The Creator had to raise up judges to rescue Israel from the enemies, but when the judge died, the people returned to their corrupted ways. King Solomon grew up knowing these things. That's why he had said, What well, seems right in the sight of man, but will end up in death. Judges, Chapter 2 the angel of the Lord went up from Gilgal to Bochim with a message for the Israelites. He told them, I brought you out of Egypt into this land that I swore to give to your ancestors, and I said I would never break my covenant with you. For your part, you were not to make any covenants with the people living in this land. Instead, you were to destroy their altars. Why then have you disobeyed my command? Since you have done this, I will no longer drive out the people living in your land. They will be thorns in your sides, and their gods will be a constant temptation to you. When the angel of the Lord finished speaking, the Israelites wept loudly. So they called the place weeping, and they offered sacrifices to the Lord. After Joshua sent the people away, each of the tribes left to take possession of the land allotted to them. And the Israelites served the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua and the leaders who outlived him, those who had seen all the great things the Lord had done for Israel. Then Joshua, son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died at the age of 110. They buried him in the land he had inherited at Timnath Sirah, in the hill country of Ephraim, north of Mount Gash. After that generation died, another generation grew up who did not acknowledge the Lord or remember the mighty things he had done for Israel. Then the Israelites did what was evil in the Lord's sight and worshipped the images of Behar. They abandoned the Lord the God of their ancestors who had brought them out of Egypt. They chased after other gods, worshipped the gods of the people around them, and they angered the Lord. They abandoned the Lord to serve Baal and the images of Ashtoreth. This made the Lord burn with anger against Israel, so he handed them over to marauders who stole their possessions. He sold them to their enemies all around, and they were no longer able to resist them. Every time Israel went out to battle, the Lord fought against them, 
bringing them defeat just as he promised, and the people were very distressed. Then the Lord raised up judges to rescue the Israelites from their enemies. Yet Israel did not listen to the judges, but prostituted themselves to other gods, bowing down to them. How quickly they turned away from the path of their ancestors, who had walked in obedience to the Lord's commands. Whenever the Lord placed a judge over Israel, he was with that judge and rescued the people from their enemies throughout the judge's lifetime. For the Lord took pity on his people who were burdened by oppression and suffering. But when the judge died, the people returned to their corrupt ways, behaving worse than those who had lived before them. They followed other gods, worshiping and bowing down to them, and they refused to give up their evil practices and stubborn ways. So the Lord burned with anger against Israel. He said, Because these people have violated the covenant I made with their ancestors and have ignored my commands, I will no longer drive out the nations that Joshua left unconquered when he died. I did this to test Israel, to see whether or not they would obey the Lord as their ancestors did. That is why the Lord did not quickly drive the nations out or allow Joshua to conquer them all. With 500 years of Israel in apathy and apostasy, where are the unbroken chains of heavenly divine righteous judges? And where is this court to judge Israel on ceremonial laws that Asher claims? Or how does an unbroken chains of oral commandments from Moses possibly survive 500 years of apostasy. The only place you find this information is in Asher's More Off Theology because he preaches this court doesn't always exist within the four walls. In other words, this ceremonial court and unbroken chain of judges doesn't exist in the Bible, making the Bible unreliable. A court doesn't always exist within four walls. I'm sorry? For example, a court doesn't always exist within four walls. Now we know the elders... It's like, come on! Getting on track, so you agree that getting on track means having a ruling body <laughs> and has authority from heaven to establish civil law. As Asher, said, Asher, I'm Asher, fine. if you want to... If you I want to... If you want that's to believe it. that, if you want to, if you want to believe that, that's fine. But any person who reads the Bible and then they listen to the stories of the rabbis and the authority and this unshake and this and everything, they're going to go home and read the Bible and they're not going to find it. And yes, if you demonstrate this, I will stop teaching it. Shall we continue to demonstrate? Maybe Asher went into defense to defend his religion or his faith, or maybe he went into defense to think that his religion is infallible. He tried to use Numbers 11 to show rabbinic authority, but when one reads that chapter, that holds no weight. I experienced a very dark side of Judaism, a dark side that I thought I would never encounter a one-on-one -on -one conversation with. Sadly, this dark side of Judaism is widely spread and has been going on since the 2nd BCE and is going to continue to spread because religion is a wide and broad path that most will go. Hearing the complaints in Jewish schools and communities of the scriptural perversion and all these added on rules can bring a dead man to tears. To those who have donated to this brothel, the written Torah says, if a thief is caught, this statue of theft, the creator's judgment is, the thief must pay back everything the thief stole. And if the thief cannot pay back, he must be sold as a slave until he could pay back of what he stole. Today, the thief will go to jail and be a slave to the system, or he could become your indentured slave. There's no such thing as Mosaic authority. Deuteronomy 17.8 does not give anyone heaven authority to establish civil law because the Torah already provides us civil commandments from the Creator that comes with blessings and curses. Made up commandments from men comes with curses. Asher and his perverted disciples that he does sword fights with privately after rabbinic Talmud portion study all claim that I'm not knowledgeable of the Bible. Excuse me. Asher. I'm appalled. Word to Asher and his perverted disciples. Let spirit-filled Israelites teach and interpret the scriptures that spirit Israelites written. And whatever scriptures that the spiritless converts and the spirit chucking out coat wrote, you perverts can interpret those, which are none. <laughs> <laughs> to those that has woken up through the Holy Spirit and now following the word and those new to Torah, I hope you guys like this Laugh and Learn episode of Asher Mesa versus Mike Molinar on Noahide Laws and Asher Mesa versus Mike Molinar on the Oral Law. I sure did. I'm Mike Molinar and this is Military Torah.